Welcome to Liberty Today. Coming up on today's program, Gordon Howie and Bob Ellis ask whatever happened to the tea in Tea Party. We'll have a roundtable discussion on pro-life issues and a special report on Governor Mike Round's appearance at Pennington County Republican Ambassadors. All this and more on Liberty Today. Bob Ellis, the Tea Party mantra, when it really began to emerge, was taxed enough already. Mm -hmm. Where has that gone? We haven't heard a whole lot about that lately, and I think it may have been to the detriment of the movement. You know, uh, uh, in South Dakota, people who were at those Tea Party rallies, who are legislators uh, in the House and the Senate, just voted to increase our taxes once again. Mm Mm-hmm. How does that, how do they rationalize that? You know, I don't even think they really try to. Uh, I think a lot of times politicians hope that the people aren't watching so that they can do things like that that are in complete contradiction to the stated values of their party or maybe even to their own stated values and just hope that nobody's going to notice and too often they get away with it. Well, in this case, we're talking right now about the tourism tax, which was set to expire, what, in July of 2013. Well, uh, Tea Party patriots who are in the legislature voted to extend it permanently. Mm -hmm. Now, and they would say, well, that's not a tax increase. Well, if it's set to end and they vote to initiate it again, is that or is that not a tax increase? Yeah. Well, I, you know, if you call it a tax increase or not a tax increase, I see it as a pro-tax vote, which is really what's, the, what's most important to me. It, it is uh, in favor of continuing a tax that could otherwise end and lower, lower the cost that the people are paying for goods and services. What do you say to the legislator who used this argument on me? Uh, well, uh, 76% of it is paid by tourists. Only 24% is paid by South Dakotans. Well, that may be true, but you're, you're still going to be uh, getting your South Dakotans that are being hit by that tax. But really, I mean, is that the way we want to treat guests to our state is, hey, how you doing? Welcome to our state. Here's an extra tax for you. Well, you and I talked about a better solution. Tell the viewers what uh, what you and I agree would be a better solution. Well, you know what this tax is being used for, which is basically to promote tourism in South Dakota. I think is a good thing. It's it's a it's a wonderful goal that they have. But I think that it's not the best use of government service. It's 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 not uh, the proper role of government to promote tourism. I think that governments have a role in that. Um, they promote uh, economic well-being by promoting environments where taxes are low, where regulations are as little as possible, and that, that promotes commerce and promotes economic growth. Uh, something like this is something that uh, the tourism businesses themselves could come together and do. They could uh, form their own association or co-op. They could charge their customers whatever they want they, to charge them. Exactly, and and make those contributions to this general fund that they could in turn go out and promote the tourism that the state is doing now. Why do we need to have this money funnel through government hands in order to get out and promote tourism when the private businesses could do it themselves. Well, it's why in South Dakota, tourism, as you probably know, is the number three industry in the state. That surprises a lot of people. They think tourism is number two, (laughs) but that's not accurate. Ag is number one, state government is number two, and tourism is uh, number three. Well. Why would we not encourage tourism businesses, tourism-related businesses, to uh, promote uh, their own industry instead of promoting the second largest industry in the state, which is state government, which we would agree less government is better government. Yeah. Well, that certainly seems to make more sense. It, you, when you funnel money through a third party's hands, some of that sticks to that third party, and I think that may be the reason that, that uh, state government is number two in the state, because some of that money is sticking there. If we want to shrink government, which I, most of us will agree that that's the right thing to do, 
we need to get government out of that loop as the middleman and let the let the private businesses be doing what they really could and should do better themselves. Well, many people think uh, state government uh, being number two, uh, no pun intended, <laughs> is not an appropriate uh, mm -hmm. ranking, that it should be way down the list. It should. And the way that happens is by legislators who, who take common sense, Tea Party patriots taking common sense to the state legislature and voting against more taxation. Right, right. I mean, do we really believe in the values that we espouse? That's that's where the rubber meets the road. We can say whatever we want to say, but do we live out those values in the way that we live our lives? And if we're a legislator, if we're a, a, a government leader, do we live out those values in the votes that we cast and the policies that we support? Yes. In this case, if you vote yes on this tourism tax, will South Dakotans pay more tax or less tax? Well, the answer is... We know. We know they'll pay more tax. Might not be too late to call your state senator and tell them to vote no on this important issue.